Martin Sillier is Australia's premier surf rock guitarist and also a member of legendary Australian surf band The Atlantics, who had some of those classic surfing hits uh, years ago. Martin is on the line, and Martin, thanks very much for joining us this afternoon. Thanks, John. It's a pleasure. Well, you've been a professional musician since the age of 14, but you've yes. become known as a surfing guitarist over the years. What are some of the elements that are associated with surfing music? Well, surfing music, as far as I'm aware, generated out of California in the early, very, very early 60s, and it's also associated with a brand name, Fender. Um, Leo Fender was the inventor of the Fender Stratocaster and Telecaster and Fender Amplifier, and um, uh, from what I know, the um, uh, emergence of that company, which is based in Southern California, uh, ties in with the emergence of surf music. And the sur whole surfing culture was a growth area around there. But I think that surfing music is, um, the elements are the sound and the capturing the intensity and the feeling of the ocean. I think you try and do that with your guitar sounds and get the moods and the moods often change. That's how I understand it. Anybody who gets involved in surfing knows that they're p very passionate people and they're also very passionate about their music as well, aren't they? Yes, they definitely are, and uh, passionate about everything, even the time of day. I mean, it, to be a surfer, a true surfer, it takes dedication. The times of, uh, of yeah, especially early in the morning, the times I've seen some of the, the guys get up and, and go out, is, uh, you know, it shows commitment. Yeah, and it's uh, also being at one with nature. I know my son's a, a, a really passionate surfer. He just, just loves the uh, the feeling of getting out there in the surf and being being with nature. Yes, exactly. Now, you've been in some great bands over the years and some very colourful names like the Flying Fonzarellis and also yes. Midget and the Farrellies. Now, they were yes. extremely popular in Fremantle during the America's Cup, and that was a great place to be, wasn't it, at the time? America's Cup when it came through Perth, um, I remember 1987 ish, around there sometime. Uh, it was based at, we have, Mission of the was a very well known band around a three metal area. The interesting thing, the bass player who's playing with me at the moment, Hayden, he was at that, it was actually his band. His band was Mission of the Farrellers. And I joined his band back in the 80s, and now he's actually playing with me. Uh, I'm in Melbourne at the moment, and um, we're actually doing a gig last night and tonight in St Kilda. Hayden's actually the bass player. But in the um, back at America's Cup Day, we were playing uh, maybe five, six, seven times a week in Fremantle. It was just uh, such a vibrant place, and Fremantle itself went um, uh, through a massive growth period. It was a really good, good, good uh, time to be around there. Yeah, I was there at the time. It just had a wonderful atmosphere. Always something happening, wasn't there? Always something and a good vibe. Always something happening, and I think that was the emergence emergence of those. Um, those brewing, company, uh, brewing companies, everyone was brewing their own beers like Red Back and, and those sort of things were happening at the same time in that area. It was really vibrant. Yeah, that's right. Well, the Atlantics had some huge hits in the 60s associated with the surfing culture and you joined the band in the 90s. Okay, what happened there in the 90s? The band uh, disbanded in 1970 after being successfully successful in the, in the 60s. They went away and started their families, etc., that sort of thing. And they were looking for a guitar player and... Um, I didn't know this, but I, I met Bosco Bosnak, the original bass player with the Atlantics, and I, at a social event. We got on well, and I gave him a cassette, it was cassettes back in those days, of some demos I've been working on. I was going to do a solo album myself of guitar instrumental stuff in that style. And I asked Bosco if he would play bass, and he just said to me, what do you want my clunky old bass on your recordings for? So I just said, well, take the cassette, have a listen, see what you think. And uh, to my surprise, uh, not long after that, Bosco rang and he said, look, I played your songs to um, the guys in the Atlantics. And, he said, and they said, um, would you be interested in joining up with us? And I just said, sure, <laughs> you know, and that was it from there on. Yeah, that must, must have been a huge thrill because they had some wonderful hits, didn't they, in the 60s? Oh, well, yeah, there was Bombora, which is now you know, the, the, the classic song, um, sums up the whole era, which was actually number one in Sydney for eight weeks. The guys were like 19 or 20 years old at the time. And there's songs like The Crusher, War of the Worlds. Then they also had some vocal hits, which people don't really know about, like songs like Come On, which are now cult classics and stuff like that. They had a whole vocal career in the late 60s as well. Well, you've also released a solo album called Revenge of the Surf Guitar, and you yes. do a lot of your own writing too, don't you? Uh, yes, I've, I've written 
uh, three or four albums for the Atlantics and also the last two albums. Actually, the last album I've done, I've done a few uh, cover songs on there, uh, like Wall Don't Run, Pipeline, Apache. And that was on the album called Surfosaurus, which came out in July this year. But, um, yes, yeah, so I certainly um, have a few original songs up my sleeve. Well, you're going to be performing at uh, Bond University on Sunday, and this sounds yes. like it's going to be a great afternoon with uh, lots of atmosphere there too. It should be a great location. I'll be playing songs from the Atlantic repertoire plus songs from the solo album. I'll be doing a bit of everything. Yeah, and you collect vintage guitars. Now, how many guitars have you actually got? Uh, that's a good question, John. Um, I haven't actually counted recently, but probably 50-ish, I would guess. And um, I haven't bought or sold anything for a while now, but I've, I've, I've got a lot of my guitars back in the 80s, early 90s, and I still have, have them all. Are these guitars that have been used by other mu- musicians? They, they come from various sources. Sometimes it's word of mouth, and some of them are quite collectible, and uh, and you don't really take them to gigs. Uh, most of the guitars I've had, I use, I've had, I've just had since since like the late 70s when I was quite young. I, I was lucky enough to get a couple of really good instruments then, and I've still got them and use them now. Fantastic, yeah. Well, as a collector myself, I uh, I know what a passion it can be. Once once you get started collecting something, you uh, just continue. There's always one more thing to get, and uh, it's a bit like a disease. You've got to try and control it sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. It just becomes part of your life. You let it take over your life. Exactly. Well, <laughs> well it's going to be a great event, a uh, free event this Sunday, and uh, yes. the organisers are encouraging everybody to come along in the surfing gear, so I hope you have a fantastic afternoon. Martin, it's been great to talk to you this Thank afternoon. You,